Well, to talk more about this issue, I'm joined now by Jean-Francois Tony, who's the president of the Syracuse International Institute for Criminal Justice and Human Rights. You're also a former prosecutor at the Court of Appeal in Rennes here in France. Thank you very much for being with us today. Can you talk us through some of the legal issues? We're talking about a day against impunity. Why are we so concerned about impunity when it comes to cr crimes against journalists? The issue today is that uh, as uh, you have uh, like 65 journalists killed in 2020, the trend is that more and more of them are killed outside um, uh, conflict zones, which means that 60% of them uh, are killed by uh, mafias, by criminal organizations. And the difficulty in this case is that uh, the, the uh, criminal organizations use uh, contract killers they come, they shoot, they execute, and they go. No trace, no witness, no way to find who is the uh, the uh, the actual uh, uh, organization uh, behind this uh, behind this uh, killing. So it requires, from the part of prosecutors, a very very high level of skills to. Uh, to be quick, because the quicker you are in, in doing an investigation, the, the better chances you have to uh, uh, to try to resolve it. We have to know that today, nine out of ten cases remain unresolved. This is why the UNESCO, the International Association of uh, Prosecutors, and the Syracuse International Institutes have made a priority to try to strengthen the skills of prosecutors. To, to better address, investigate and prosecute the murders against journalists. What sort of skills are we talking about here? What do prosecutors need to learn how to do? You know, facing that kind of killings where you have no trace, you have, uh, you have to, uh, uh, to, to improve the skills, for example, to, to uh, looking at the, all the cases that the journalist was investigating, uh, trying to analyze uh, what could be the, uh, uh, the persons uh, who ordered the killings uh, before. You have to make use of special investigative techniques like uh, uh, a surveillance, electronic surveillance, uh, um, um, financial investigation sometimes to see where, uh, because when there is a contract killing, there is money flowing. Uh, a lot of things um, uh, which require specific skills, but also, and more important, um, uh, the investigation must uh, be done while protecting the, the sources of the information of the journalists. And this is, this is a real challenge for um, justice systems because whereas uh, there is um, a very uh, a strict um, uh, right of protecting the sources of journalists, when you come to justice, uh, it's the contrary. You have to be transparent of how you provided evidence who witnesses who witnessed a, a case? What is the name of the person, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. And uh, these two conflicts between protection of sources and transparency in uh, providing evidence of the case is, is really a challenge for prosecutors. We see murders of journalists in in many different parts of the world. Some of them often, perhaps in places we wouldn't expect to see this happen. Uh, I'm thinking of the high profile killings of people like Daphne Caronia Galizia in Malta. Are there countries who are better at prosecuting crimes against journalists who give us a good example that could be followed elsewhere? You know, um, uh, you're right to say that uh, killings of journalists do not occur elsewhere in other parts of the world. It is in the in the heart of Europe, in the last killings, uh, I'm thinking of Peter de Vries in the Netherlands. I'm thinking of uh, uh, the journalists killed in, in Greece in uh, a couple of months ago. All of this occurred this year, and of course, as you mentioned, Daphne Caruana Galizia in Malta. This occurs also in the most uh, con um, democratic, well-regulated well countries where you would not imagine that criminal organizations could be, uh, uh, could be well um, uh, strong enough to, to, uh, to allow themselves to kill a journalist. And uh, those countries have already a, level, a high level of uh, uh, competence in, in fighting against uh, crime. Um, 
Probably, I would say, countries which have been faced the uh, most with killing of journalists, I'm thinking in particular of Mexico, have developed uh, strong skills and also specialized teams of prosecutors uh, to fight uh, to fight against that uh, that sort of crimes. Uh, two days ago, another another journalist was killed in uh, in Mexico by the cartels, and uh, the Mexico is doing very well and could be an example for many countries in the world. We are actually using these prosecutors to train other prosecutors in other places of the world. We're talking today about the launch of this forum in The Hague, which is going to hear uh, violations of press freedom and focus on some murders of journalists. It doesn't have prosecutorial powers. Nobody can be convicted in it. But does this sort of initiative help in the cause of shining a light on the complexities of these cases? Absolutely. There is a lack of sensitization of citizens about the fact that killing a journalist is not only a question of attempting to laugh someone, but behind that, it's um, the attempting to the, um, the, the right of, uh, of expression, to attempting the freedom of expression, but also attempting democracies themselves. It's actually democracies themselves which are hit by that. And um, when you say that you need to end impunity, it gives the impression that justice systems are just making, taking no action against that because they are busy elsewhere, because they don't care, etc. No, the, the difficulty is that these cases are always very complex. And actually, it's a good initiative to, uh, uh, to show that uh, it's not always easy keeping the rule of law in prosecuting um, um, murderers is something which is difficult. There are other ways to, do, to address that. The UNESCO and the Syracuse Institute, together with uh, OSIGEN, or the, uh, the, uh, the NGO active in this, uh, these cases in Italy, uh, have, are uh, organizing uh, the uh, celebration of the, um, uh, the UN Day uh, to End Impunity of Crimes Against Journalists here in Syracuse at, uh, tomorrow. And uh, in this occasion, we will hear from journalists who have been threatened uh, by, uh, by uh, criminal organizations. And from these examples, we can draw strategies, we can draw um, a, a better understanding of how to better fight this, uh, these crimes. Okay, Jean-François Tony from the Syracuse International Institute, thank you very much for speaking to us thank, on France 24. Thank you. Have a good day.